I remember when I first started getting really serious about YouTube and I said to myself, I cannot wait to hit 1 million subscribers. I can wait. You want to know the truth? Here's the truth. It's lonely. It's a lot of work. You're doing everything yourself. You miss out on some pretty special moments because you're constantly working or you're thinking about work. You feel guilty about taking time off. You're constantly dealing with bullies and trolls who have absolutely nothing to do but criticize every single thing that you say right down to the way you look. And you have to constantly live with the thought that you could pour everything into your channel, everything. And YouTube can take it away like that. This week, I'm talking about the price of success. Let's go. Hello everyone, my name is Rogan and this is This Behaving Gal. On my platform, I do social commentary and reaction videos. I encourage my audience to have private conversations in public. If you have been on my platform once, twice, three times, three million times, and you have not yet subscribed to my platform, please go ahead and just do yourself a favor and do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's free. All you have to do is take your finger and put it down below and click the subscribe button. So let's just jump right into the video. People love the idea of success but not the work that comes along with it. I had a conversation recently with a young lady who says she's been watching my platform for a number of years. And she said that she was just really blown away by the growth that I had um, based on like last year, I think I was like at 60 something hundred, maybe 63 or 6,400 subscribers. And now I think I'm like knocking on 80,000. I don't feel like it's been like a crazy growth, but it definitely has been growth, no doubt about that. But I've seen people go from like, 19,000 subscribers or 9,000 subscribers and they're like 500,000. Look at someone like a Kelly Stamps who just blew up during the pandemic. So, you know, when I think about that type of growth, I'm like, I'm thinking like you just go from 500 to like 250,000. That's like crazy growth. But for her, she felt like my channel had uh, really exploded. And she said, but it's not hard doing that kind of stuff though. I mean, you just turn on your camera and you're talking. So that's the easiest thing. And I was like, ah! I was play offended. All I do is turn on my camera and talk. I mean, yes, I turn on my camera and then I talk, but there's so much work that goes into it. And it's just like, I hate when people say things like that. Your girl was so offended. I, I think she saw it all in my face. And I said, boo, you wouldn't even tune in if I just sat here and just talked. I obviously have to have some sort of point. And I want to say also that even though the things that I'm about to say are related to YouTube, it really is relevant across multiple industries because it doesn't matter what field you are in. If you have ambition to be successful or you are already successful, you know that a lot of the things that I'm going to say ring true. So when she said that, I, I, I politely corrected her. I said, I don't just open up my camera and talk. I mean, yes, and the basics, that's what I do, but it's so much more than that. And when I started outlining all of the things that I had to do to make my channel successful and just to put out a video week after week, she just kind of went, Oh, mm, well, I ain't trying to do all that. I'm like, well, that's what comes along with it. So it's not just opening up a camera, but that's, that's, you know, if people who don't know, they don't know. There's a lot that goes into this. So let's talk a little bit about the price of success because I put on my thumbnail and you guys saw it if you clicked, um, a little happy emoji when I was at like 6,300 or 6,400 subscribers versus, you know, the downturn face, the sad emoji, um, when I'm like at 80,000 because Honestly, I felt a degree of happiness um, and peace when I didn't have as many subscribers. I'm grateful for my many subscribers and I hope to continue growing on the platform. Let me quickly say that. But there was a great deal of peace because everybody didn't know me and the people who knew me, I felt they were a little bit more civil and appreciative of the content that I was putting out. So early in my YouTube journey, I was doing hair commentary and hair videos and fashion and makeup. And then I pivoted and I started doing commentary and videos on living in Washington DC where I live and living and working and just visiting Nassau Bahamas where I'm originally from. And that's what brought a lot of people to my channel. They were really interested in that, especially my Bahamas content. And then people were always just really grateful and thankful for that commentary. But um, I didn't see a lot of the trolls and the online bullies. It was like maybe one or two when I was doing that con 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 content, pardon me. It was like one or two when I was doing that content. But when I pivoted, that's when things really changed. And things really changed with my video, LGBTQIA, I want a divorce. That's when everything just sort of, I suppose exploded and surprisingly that video was overwhelmingly positive but that's when I started to see how nasty the trolls can get online but that comes with the territory when you put yourself out there I wish it didn't but 
Unfortunately, it does. The reason why I say people love the idea of success, but not the work that comes along with it is because it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter if you're a baker. It doesn't matter if you're a dentist. People have aspirations because they see they see what the benefits of whatever it is that you do for a living. You might be an accountant who's bored on your job, but you make a lot of money and they see your car, they see your house, and they think that that's the career for them, or they at least want the trappings that that presents, but they don't understand how much work goes into it. And same thing with the YouTube channel. Um, there's a lot of back end work that goes into it. It's a lot of me feeling down, especially when a video that I poured my heart and soul and time into doesn't really do well. People come to my channel and they see the hundreds of thousands of views on a, on a video, but they don't see when it's like 5,000 views or 3,000 views. And that's a flop for me, especially when you, you start to get adjusted and uh, acclimated to like 200 and something thousand views or half a million views or close to a million views, then it's like, oh damn, I only got 5,000 views on this one. And it's crazy because when I first started, I would have died for those numbers. I'm like, oh my God, I got 5,000 views on this video. And not only that, it's like, I feel like chasing the numbers has sort of tainted my love for it because before it was just like putting out the content. If only 20 people saw it, I don't care. I felt like I did my best work and that was it. But then like it becomes like so competitive and it becomes um, a money game because the more eyeballs on your videos, of course, you're going to make more money. And when you see your revenue dip substantially, it's like, mm, I don't like this feeling. And <laughs> so I certainly understand why people would feel um, you know, so depressed when their numbers aren't or when their channel isn't pulling the numbers that it ought to or what they felt it, sh it has in the past, you know, so that can be really, really damaging. But there's a lot of work that goes into it. It's not just me sitting in the front of my camera. It's me having to plan out videos, research because you're on YouTube. And so people are all, you have a lot of experts in the comment section. I'm not talking about the faux experts. I'm talking about real experts. And you don't want to come on here and say stupid stuff. You don't want to come on here and say things that are inaccurate. So I'm very interested in data. I love data and you can argue with me all you want, but as long as I'm presenting those stats, like you could argue with your mama, I don't care. So I love to do research, but that takes a lot of time. And then I don't work with a team. One of the things that I realize um, a lot of YouTubers do, and I feel a little too early on is they go and they hire all these people to do thumbnails, to um, edit their videos, to even record their videos sometimes, uh, to color grade their videos, um, to SEO, search engine optimization, um, you know, report f for their videos, that just every facet they're outsourcing to somebody else. And that, that racks up money. It's so costly. And so those individuals, and I've seen it time and time again, I won't call any YouTubers names, but they've had to come back and say, oh, I had to let my staff go because it was, it was becoming too much. It's a lot. And someone like me, and there are other YouTubers out there who do it all by themselves, it's a lot. It's very, very taxing, emotionally taxing, mentally taxing. And this is a hobby for me. Um, so imagine having to work and then come and sit down. Sometimes I come home in the evening and then it's like, I have to sit right at my computer and start working. And I work sometimes 2 a.m. till 2 a.m. till 3 a.m. And then I have to get right back up 6.30, 7 o'clock to get up to go and do the real job. And it's a lot. So people don't see that as well. Then when you put everything into it and the numbers aren't there, the people don't watch it, they don't have an interest in it. Oh, it's like, it's like a major blow. It's just like a major blow. But I've learned, and I'm not saying this like as a joke, I've learned to just like kind of roll with the punches. Like, okay, that video didn't, didn't do well. Let me just get up and just move on to the next thing. There's next week. I have another chance to, to put out some other content that people might be feeling. Um, but one of the things I also want to say to my fellow YouTubers is this. A lot of times you'll put out a video and it doesn't do well. Don't get too discouraged because I cannot tell you how many times I've put out videos and they didn't perform well in that moment. And then all of a sudden, I'm just seeing like a big uptick, like a huge spike in my videos. And I'm like, what's precipitating this? Life events happen. Sometimes things happen in social media. Sometimes sometimes things happen in the world. And then people just all of, all of a sudden they start looking for that kind of content. They're looking for some sort of commentary on it. And it can really blow up. I remember my video on, what was it? Anti-white racist TikToks. Um, when I put that out, it was like 20,000 views. 
And then it, I think it, it lingered at like 40 something thousand for the longest time. And that was a sponsored video. And I remember saying, oh, damn, this is so disappointing. I have a sponsor attached to this and it, and it, and it didn't even really do high numbers. And um, I think I did a, a makeup video or something like that. But anyway, I remember just leaving it alone. And then all of a sudden it started trending for some reason. Like people just started finding it and it just started blowing up. And it was crazy to me. I made some some good money off of that video just after that started blowing up. And so I would definitely say put your all into every single video you do. Don't ever like shortchange it. I think I've maybe shortchanged it one time. One time in the 202 videos that I have on this platform. I may, may have shortchanged one time where I could have gone a little bit more in depth and just deeper. But um other than that, like I try to give my all every single time because you just never know which one is going to be the video that blows. I don't know that a video is going to perform really well. I don't. There are certain videos that people come to my channel and they love. Um, and I could very well say, oh, I'm going to niche down and just do that type of video. But I'm not because I, I, I don't want to get bored on my own platform. And I think if we're going to have social commentary, I want to talk about different things that really affect me and you. And so if that means I may only get 4,000 views on a video, but I felt like there was a conversation that needed to be had, I will definitely do that. So I'm saying all this stuff to say, it's not just me to that lady's point, just opening up my camera and speaking to you guys. It's a lot of work that goes into it. A lot of work that people aren't aware of. And if they were aware of it, they probably would be like, like she said, I'm not into it. Like I wouldn't do all of that. Cause if, it, if that's what it takes, I'm not going to do that. So definitely consider that fact. Another thing you need to know is that there is great stress in chasing success. There is great stress in chasing success. Let's move it away from YouTube for a second. I think the saying nothing that's worth having comes easily comes to mind for me because it doesn't matter if you're on YouTube or you are some, you're working a regular nine to five, a, an 11 to seven, a 10 to six. You want to be in the C-suite. You want to be vice president of your company. You want to be the boss at wherever you work. There's a lot that comes with that. There's a lot of pressure, internal and external. Internal because especially if they promote you to the position, there's like, I can't let them down or I don't want people to feel like I, I got this, this position and I can't do it. It's a lot of that. And so it's a lot of internal dialogue that goes on, on a lot of self-doubt sometimes. And then you have that external doubting from people who might may have wanted that position or, you know, didn't think that you deserved it. And so it's like, you have to constantly prove something to yourself and constantly prove something to somebody else. It might require you working overtime a lot. It might require you working late into the evenings. It might require you working on the weekends. It's a lot of stress that comes chasing that success. If you're somebody who's working a job and you're like, shoot, I could do this myself. I could be an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur is, I think sometimes we glamorize it too much. It's a lot of work that goes with that as well. I mean, I'm not just talking about just doing the actual work, but the behind the scenes work, the, the paying the taxes, making sure that you're compliant. It's a lot that's involved and people would do well to really think about, is this something I truly want from my life? You know, and beyond the glamorization of it all, is this what I really want? Because sometimes you work easier when you're working for somebody, you show up, you do your job and you go home and to hell with the rest of it, that's on them. So there's a lot of stress with that as well. Also, when you're thinking about the price for success, you have to also understand, and this is very cliche at this point, we've said it a million and one times, but not everybody is going to like you. And I wish it didn't come along with the territory, but unfortunately it does. And particularly being here on this YouTube platform, I always say in, in, in my videos, you know, I, I never seek to offend anybody. I really don't. I don't set out to be controversial or any of that stuff. That's not my style. I'd rather have civil, decent conversation with people. Um, but sometimes even when you're uh, being nice to people, you're being kind to them, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter what field you are in. You could be the nicest person on the planet. Somebody is going to have something negative to say about you. Um, they're just not going to like you. And you have to understand. I remember a friend of mine, when one of my videos was doing really well, she said, Ro, I need you to understand something like you're, you're a nice person, but people are not going to like you because of what you're saying. And you have to understand that you cannot win everybody over because at the time I was like, like I was questioning myself, like, why would they even say this? And I, they, I know my heart. I know my intentions. It's just like, they don't know you leave it alone. Understand that your tribe will find you. And, I, and I've adopted that, that lingo into my language. My tribe will find me because they will understand that those aren't my intentions, but people, there are some people who 
it doesn't matter how nice you are. They are, for some reason, it could be your light. It could be just the way you speak. It could be the way you look. It doesn't matter. They have something negative to say about you. And I feel like that is a reflection about who they are more so than who it is, who you are. Sometimes it is you. You know, if you're being a jerk, you're being a douchebag, of course, you know, people can say some things about you. But if you're being a decent human being and someone still has something negative to say about you, um, just know that it comes with the territory and learn how to shut that out. Um, I have YouTube Studio. I know a lot of you who aren't content creators aren't familiar with this, but YouTube Studio is the back end. It tells you like how you, it gives you your analytics to tell you how your videos are performing, what's not performing. It tells you how much money you're projected to make for the month. Um, it also, what else? Oh, the comments. It gives you all the comments um, that people would have left on your channel from the moment you even started your channel. Like if you have videos from like five years ago and somebody's leaving a comment, you'll definitely see those comments. And I remember in the beginning, it was easy to go through the comments because I wasn't getting a lot of comments on my channel. But as the popularity increased, it became really difficult. And I like engaging with my audience. I always ask you guys to weigh in down below, but it's not an easy thing to respond to everyone. And I don't think as a content creator, we should even be expected to respond to everyone. That's a difficult task, especially if you're like a one woman band like myself, it's hard. But beyond that, sometimes we're, 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 we're ingesting a lot of negativity from people who have something to say. There are people who ask me, why am I wearing hats all the time in my videos? I don't wear hats all the time in my videos, but I happen to be somebody who loves hats. I've been wearing hats from I was a kid. I was that kid who always had on a floppy hat, a weird hat, like I love hats. And I don't have a roof, so it protects my head from the sun. Damn it, I like hats. That's why I wear hats. I wear hats because I like hats. Someone said to me, you wear too much makeup. Okay, you should wear less makeup. I won't. Now what? Why try to change me? If you are so bothered by my makeup, but you like my content, then minimize your screen and just listen. You know, this is, this is what comes with the territory, unfortunately, when you're chasing success, particularly here on this platform, as people try to change you. Someone criticized the way I speak. Um, you, you speak really weird. Okay, I speak weird. Or you think you're better than, I mean, it comes, it comes with all this foolishness. Someone always has something to say. I would encourage you when you're chasing success and someone has negative things to say about you is to really like sit back and evaluate. I would not say to dismiss what somebody has to say, but you have to be very discerning about what you're hearing and who you're hearing it from. Individuals who tell me that my channel is garbage or I'm not good enough or any of the trashy things that they say about me, I do one thing. I go and I click on their username. And you know what I see? Nothing. No one's following them. They're not following anyone. They're just on the platform to create problems. So why would I take any advice from someone like that? The people who are doing great things don't have time to sit around hating on anybody else. You're not gonna love everything I do, I get that. I'm not gonna love everything that I see, I get that. But I don't have to demean anybody in the process and I don't think they need to demean me either. But there are also people who will create a channel, a fake channel on YouTube just to hate. <laughs> just to hate on people, that's what they do. If you have the energy to create a whole separate channel just to hate on somebody, why don't you create a channel and do your thing? At least make some money and get some popularity from it. At least make some money. You're wasting all your energy on somebody else who's doing something that's stupid. Um, and I've been in different work environments and I've, I've said the same thing, like people who hate on someone because they're going in and, and, and educating themselves when they're on a job. Someone might say, oh, I'm gonna go do my master's degree. Here comes the haters. What you hating for? If you, if why are you hating on that person? Go get your master's degree as well. I worked with a lady who co was constantly in school. She was always doing something, and it was such an inspiration to someone like me. Like I was like, you know what? I like this. And she had a family. I'm like, if this woman could do it with a family, going and getting her education and doing certification, why the hell am I not doing that? The people who were hating, they're still there without degrees and certification. So don't worry about these folks. It just comes with the territory. You, you don't have the Midas touch. No one has the Midas touch. Everything that you do will not be successful. And I think that's helpful because sometimes we can get locked into this mindset that, oh, everything I do turns to gold and then you kind of lose your humanity. I, I love the fact that there are things that happen on my channel that are very humbling and it just, it, it allows me to never take anything for granted. When a video explodes and it does really well, 
I'm grateful, but I don't, I don't think, oh, every video now is going to explode because my history has taught me that that's not the way it works. <laughs> so um, I would say even in your day-to-day -day life too, when you have failures on your job or you have failures in your new business that you started, or you started your business and you thought everybody was going to come um, through your brick and mortar store uh, or come online and purchase your, your things and they didn't like, don't give up. I'm not going to ever advocate for giving up in that respect. Like just wait it out, try different strategies, see what works and just um, go take it from there. Because if you just be like, oh, oh, this didn't work and I just close up shop, you may have closed up shop just when you were about to have your breakthrough. If when I was getting 25 views on my video or 400 views on my video, I decided, oh, you know what, this isn't working, I'm gonna stop, then I never would have um, seen the success on my platform of having videos that, that do did like almost a million, two videos that are almost a, a million views um, or the subscribers or the money. You know, boy, the money came in so handy. It's come in handy many, many times. I thank God for it. But um, don't give up just because it gets a little rough or because things don't work out the way they are um, that you anticipated they would because that is, again, just the price of chasing success. And speaking of haters, last year I did a video because I <laughs> the haters typically come out in the videos where I'm dealing with um, the black community. Any video that I do that has to do with the black community, oh, that's where I get the most hate. So last year I did a video um, on my platform. And if you haven't watched that, please, it, it is like one of my favorite videos. It didn't perform very well because no one really searches for that kind of content like that. Um, but it really just kind of explains like my whole thought process and dealing with people who just try to push my buttons online. Like I try to laugh things off because I do have a healthy sense of humor. And beyond that, it's just like, why am I going to even take these people so seriously? Like, you don't know me. You don't care about me. I don't know you. I don't care what you have to say. I'm going to laugh at that stuff and just keep it pushing. But watch that video if you get a chance. It's going to be linked up here somewhere. Um, but that's what comes along with the territory. More money, more problems, more subscribers, more problems. The more eyeballs that you have on your channel, you are going to definitely see more bullies coming out of the out of the woodwork and they don't stop they don't ever go away uh and again the more successful you get you can expect that and sometimes it comes from unlikely sources too so just be prepared i want to talk about like the guilt that a lot of youtubers feel when they want to take a break I used to be one of those people without fail every week, Wednesday, one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I had a video out. The first time that I missed that deadline, I nearly lost my mind because I always said that I wanted my platform to be one where like people could set their clock to it, that one o'clock my video was dropping. Wednesday, they knew it was coming on. I used, to, I used to say, I want it to be like how ABC News comes on in the evening or CBS News, like people can bank on it. and. Then I had to realize, hey girl, you ain't ABC News and you ain't CBS News. You don't have a whole team working with you to do all this stuff and this is not your primary job. So admirable, yes, wonderful. You know, still keep that in the back of your mind, but don't beat yourself up when it doesn't happen. And this is what happens when you set like these goals for yourself and you want to be the best and you want to do your best on in anything that you're doing. Sometimes it can be really exhausting and unreasonable. And I remember I just used to feel so guilty about wanting to take time off. I remember my birthday was coming up and my birthday's in August. And I was like, I wanna go on vacation. I wanna go home and see my family and all that sort of stuff. And I'm thinking, maybe I should just go ahead and record all my videos so people don't know that I'm gone. And I was like, why do I wanna kill myself doing this stuff ahead of time? Like, why don't I take the time to really just, just, just take time off? Nobody gives you permission to take time off on YouTube. You don't have a boss who says, hey, I noticed you haven't been on vacation this year. You need, to, you need to put in your vacation. You need to make sure you're gone. So you have to do it yourself. And a lot of YouTubers, I watch a lot of content with people who say, I feel so guilty about taking time off. And now I'm getting to the place. I haven't really um, shed my guilt entirely, but I'm getting there to that place where I'm like, okay, no, I need to take, I need to take a, a beat. I need to take a breather here. Um, and again, when you're in your own business, no matter what, what stage you're at, you might say I'm in the, in the infancy stage. And so I can't stop now. Don't miss out on crucial moments. Like I did don't for what don't, don't do that. Like really build in some time off for yourself, for your mental health, 
for your physical health, just so you can breathe, just so you can just live. Because what are you doing this for if you're not going to enjoy it because you're so exhausted? So in my intro, I talked about how you can pour everything into your YouTube channel and YouTube can just take it away like that. And we've seen that. I, I remember doing a video several months ago, maybe last year, where I talked about um, Fresh and Fit being demonetized, having their channel demonetized over some things that they had said. They've been in a war on a war path with um, several YouTubers, uh, namely Abba and Preach, and um, uh, they were demonetized. And I talk about that video here or here, and please watch the first video that I did as well. Um, and I remember saying, you know, I didn't want them to be demonetized. I wanted them to be punished, but that's the way it went. I don't know if they're still demonetized or not, but they had millions of followers, millions of subscribers, and they were doing really good numbers as well. And can you imagine having a team like they did, people who were reliant on that money, that income, either from AdSense or from affiliate marketing or whatever they were doing, sponsors, and then just overnight, it's just, it's gone, at least the AdSense, it's, it's gone. Um, and then I remember watching a video from Abba and Priest just recently where they were like facing copyright strikes. And fortunately for them, they got it resolved, but, um, you know, they could have lost their platform as well, at least lost the monetization of it. Some of you at Fresh and Fit thought we was gonna join you in demonetization. Again! Second get credit goes to all the YouTubers who contacted me, all right? Who made videos about the topic. I appreciate you guys, okay? Uh, even though we may disagree on different things, I think at the end of the day, we want channels to exist and, you know, for the copyright business to, to be handled properly. So, uh, I appreciate the whole community. It's a scary, scary thing. It's like, it's, it, but it should be like a, a warning to people not to put all their eggs into one basket. And I remember in the beginning too, remember when I said like how I used to dream of like having a million subscribers and like, no, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I wasn't saying that I don't want a million subscribers, but I'm in no rush to get there. I want to incrementally grow on this platform and grow into the role. And I want to make sure that I'm always diversifying my income so I'm not so focused on just YouTube because I've seen too many YouTubers on this platform crying about it. I used to want to be a full-time YouTuber um, and I'm like, nah, I'm good with, with nah, I'm, I'm, I'm so good. I don't want to do that. I love having the extra income and I will continue to do that. But full-time, I'm done with that. Even Kelly Stamps uh, recently had a video when she was talking about wanting to go back and do another job um, because she just didn't have a lot to talk about and she just was feeling very lonely because again, like I said, it's a very lonely thing. It's just you creating content and if you're doing it by yourself, like I think she does it by herself, smart girl, um, you know, and she's a full-time YouTuber, she was, um, it's, it's very complicated, it's very lonely, it's very tiring, it's just sometimes you crave human interaction and I remember when I was off and I was just doing YouTube exclusively, I just was like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this full time. Part time is, is really cool. When I want to do it, I want to do it because it, it, otherwise I feel like it would taint my love for this. Like I said, this video really was uh, a, an offshoot of a conversation that I had with a woman who said, well, you know, what I do is just basically um, trivial, you know, and just, she wasn't, I shouldn't say it was trivial, but you know, she, she, What's the word I'm looking for? She, she, I think she oversimplified. I think that's the word. She oversimplified what it is that I do by just saying, I just open up a camera and I talk to the camera. When I'm done recording, that's when the work begins. I don't pass this off to anybody else. I have to do it myself. So it's a lot of work. And a lot of the things that I've said here today extend beyond YouTube. Like I said, if you are somebody who is seeking to be an entrepreneur, um, understand that you're going to deal with haters, understand that it's going to be a lot of work, it's going to be a lot of working into the wee hours of the night and sometimes in the morning. I had a friend who was staying with me and many of you have met her um, on my channel because I interviewed, I interviewed her and she said, I think God had me to come and see you Rogan and visit and to sh just to show how you work. And she went further to say like, you'd come home and you're exhausted and she used to, she would cook. She was such a great housemate for those two weeks. And she would cook and I would be like, yeah, just rest it by the computer. I got to work. And she's like, you're just going to go right into doing YouTube? And I'm like, yep, I got to do, who's going to do it? I have to do it. And this is something I'm passionate about, something I want to do. And so I got to get it done. 
when my computer crashes or or I lose footage or whatever happens, it doesn't matter. I will start again from scratch. I don't care if I'm sleep deprived. I don't care. I have to do it. And that is the cost of success. It is doing whatever it takes, however long it takes to make it. Anyway, if there was something that I said today that really resonated with you, drop it down below in the quotes. Put them in quotes so other people can see them as well. And let me know for those of you who are aiming to go back to school or you're in school right now, or you want to become an entrepreneur or you want to grow in your own role on your current job. What are some of the things that you're doing that you feel people would not be willing to do? I want to hear from the people who are parents who are who are doing it all. <laughs> you know, what are some of the sacrifices that you've had to make? Because I think a lot of people don't understand that being successful takes a great deal of sacrifice. It's a lot of sacrifice. But those individuals that we admire, that we respect so much, who are successful and have what we think we want, and I'll say what we think we want, because if we got what some of these people have, we might not be happy with it. But they have what we think we want. They worked for it. A lot of them worked really hard for it. So heavy lies the head that wears the crown. You have to do things that people are not willing to do to be excellent at your craft and to be excellent where you are. So like I said earlier, this is a different kind of video this week, but one that I wanted to share from my fellow YouTubers and for the individuals who are watching who may not yet be YouTubers, but they are interested in um, getting in this field. I want you to understand what comes along with it and you will there are things that every youtuber could tell you but you will only learn once you're in it yourself and again i think that a lot of the principles or the things that i've discussed here um, they definitely cross over in, into different industries so again if anything that i said here today resonated with you please drop a line or a quote that i said in the comment section and put them in quotation marks so other people can see it and leave your own comments down below um, about you know what you're willing to do to be successful and i will see you guys next week wednesday at one o'clock eastern standard time if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up so that people who are like-minded can see this video and uh, youtube can push it in the algorithm and i'll see you guys next week wednesday i love you and be sure to follow me on my instagram page as well at this bahamian gal Mwah! let me give you two let me give you two hand kisses because that's why Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's a one-woman band up in here. You're chilling in the rain. You're some kind of butterfly.